Debbie Gatlin. My husband, Donnie, is a worship leader. He's very anointed, and for a while he led worship at our church. And he raised up different teams with, with instruments, and there was different singers that would, were raised up for backup vocals and, and so, different solo parts. And during this time, a lady started coming to the church, and she wanted to be on that worship team really bad. And she, she asked Donnie, and Donnie just didn't have peace about it. And he tries to listen to the Lord and hear his voice about the decisions that he makes. And so this lady would come to the worship team practices, and, and she would talk to me. I wasn't on the worship team. I was just there. And she would come talk to me, and she says, I don't know why you, you and Donnie don't like me, and I need to be on this team, and this is my call. And I said, we love you. We're just waiting for the Lord to say it's time. And she just wouldn't listen to that. And it was so cool. God is so kind. In the midst of her waiting, God... Um, has her do a solo at the church and she was so anointed and, and God had a great big banner behind her and, and just, I mean, it was just so sweet. It was such a gift from the Lord to her. Well, not too long after that, one, one Sunday morning, Donna gets a call that one of the, the worship leaders or one of the, the, the different backup vocals are not going to be there. And he thought, you know, I just feel like it's time to call this lady. So he calls her up and she's not there and so he, she calls he calls someone that that he knows knows her and he says well she's not going to the church anymore her gift wasn't appreciated and she wasn't used and I thought I said man she left the week before one week before she was about to be promoted one week before the thing that she had desired was about to happen she left one week before she was about to step into part of her destiny one week, one week. She gave up because she didn't think she was appreciated. She gave up because she thought that we were being unfair. She gave up. And yet God was getting ready to promote this woman. God loves to promote. But he's looking for a people that will hang on, that won't give up when everything doesn't go their way. I love in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, Paul is talking to Jewish believers who have gone through very, very difficult times in their life. They're going through much persecution. Their property is being seized. Their, their people are being imprisoned. They're, having, they're in a difficult place, and yet they keep standing. They keep holding on. They keep believing God. So Paul is exhorting them. He says, don't throw away your confidence. It has a great reward. You have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. And God says, you know what? Don't throw away this confidence. Be steadfast. Don't move. Hold on tight. Be confident. What, what's going to happen? Well, you have this great reward before you. God says this mega reward, this huge reward is coming for those that don't throw away their confidence the Bible says has a great reward and you have need of endurance to stay under, to keep on pressing on, to keep on holding on so that when you've done the will of God, guess what? You're going to receive a blessing from the Lord. You're going to receive the promises that God declared to you. God is a faithful God. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, God is speaking through Paul and he's talking about different servants of God that have died. And he says, you know what? There's no sting in death anymore. There's no sting. And then it goes down to the end of the chapter and it says, therefore, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So Paul's talking about death and all of a sudden he says, therefore. See, the Bible says in, in first, second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us will give recompense for our deeds done in the body. And then you know what? God's going to reward us according to those deeds that are done in, our, in, in the body. So Paul says, be steadfast, immovable. You're not moved. You're holding on. You're standing. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Know this, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not in vain. God's going to give to you. God will bless you. 
God sees your steadfastness. God sees you holding on. God will break forth. God will come through. He's a faithful, faithful God. In Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, Moses is talking to the people of Israel. And he's saying, I want you to choose life and not death. He says, choose this day life and not death. Blessing and not cursing. Then he goes on and says, choose life that you may live and your descendants may live. And you do this by loving God and obeying him and holding fast to his, to the Lord. You hold fast to the Lord. You know, there's something about holding fast to the Lord. You can't help but fall in love with this God as you just cling to him, as you hold fast to him. And you know what? When you love God, you can't help but obey him. You can't help but obey him. In John, the 15th chapter, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And I love this preacher, the way he's pre he preaches it. He says, I, I think Jesus said it like this. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's like, yeah, if you love him, you'll just keep his commandments. But you hold fast to God. You fall in love with him. You keep on loving him. And you know what? Obey him. And then Moses goes on and says, you're going to live a long life in this, in this land that, that is, you're going to inherit from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land that I promised him. I am going to give you long life, and I'm going to bless you and your descendants. I will bless you. By what? You hold and fast in love with God, obeying him. You'll keep on holding on. In Psalms 112, it says this, talking about those that fear the Lord. I will not fear evil tidings. My heart, it's steadfast. It's trusting in the Lord. My heart is upheld. I will not fear until I look with satisfaction on my enemies. See, there is enemies. But God says, don't fear evil tidings. Be steadfast. The psalmist is declaring, I will be steadfast. I'm not going to fear. He knows who he's believed in. See, God wants a people. And he says that if you'll stand and if you'll keep being steadfast, you're going to look on your enemies and, and I will come and I will fight for you. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, it talks about our enemies. You see, there are enemies of God that want you to give up. They want you to throw in the towel. They know that the destiny of people's lives are held in the balance by the way you walk, by your steadfastness. They know your family is held in the balance by your steadfastness, by the way you walk, by the way you hold tight to God. They know that communities, they know that people at your job, they know that even your own destiny is affected if you're not holding fast to God, loving Him, obeying Him, holding fast. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood in Ephesians 6, it's the sixth chapter. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, world forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Then it goes on, therefore, Take up the full arm of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And he says, having done everything to stand, stand firm, therefore. I love that. Having, every, having done everything to stand, stand firm, therefore. God says, when you've done everything to stand, you just keep on standing. You keep on holding on. You keep on, one of the definitions is, you keep on standing in this mind. You don't let it go this way or that way. You keep focused on the Lord. You keep on standing. You remain in that position that you're in. You keep standing. You're abiding. You're abiding. You're remaining. You've made covenant with God so you're not being moved. God wants to give victory to his people. And he gives victory to those that will stand. You keep on standing. You keep on holding on. You're immovable. You're looking at God. You know he's faithful. You know that he's going to move on your behalf. And not just move, but he's going to reward you. He's going to reward you. In 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, there's a story about David and his mighty men. Oh, I love David and his mighty men. I love those mighty men. Well, it starts out, there's three that are exceptionally mighty. And one of those mighty men is called Shammah. I love that name, Shammah. Sounds powerful. Well, there's a story about Shammah in the midst of, of all these mighty men. And Shammah is famous for something. 
He's famous because he stood in the midst of a lentil field. He stood in the midst of a lentil field when the Philistines were coming to invade the land and people were running in terror. Shema said, no way. You're not coming into this land. You're not taking this land. You're not taking this lentil field. He refused to give ground to the evil one. He stood. He stood. And Shema has his sword drawn. And I love it. As he stood in the midst of that lentil field, the Bible says this. God wrought special victory. Or God wrought a mighty victory through the hands of Shema. God wrought a mighty victory because this man stood. Now, there's something about standing. You never hear of someone having a mighty victory in God that runs in terror. You never hear about, about someone having a, a mighty victory or being rewarded or being used powerfully by God who gives up. You never hear about them affecting people's lives and lives being changed by someone that's not willing to stand and keep on pressing through hard and difficult places. But you know what? If you'll stand, then you're a warrior for God and you are being used mightily by God. And God says, you know, I, I, will, um, I will work a great and a mighty victory through your hands if you'll stand, if you'll remain in me, if you'll just love me, and if you'll obey me, you're going to see me move mightily through you on your behalf, through your family, and through you to touch many, many lives. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for your people this day. God, I'm asking in the name of Jesus, Lord, God, put in them a heart that's steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that their labor is not in vain in you. Put in them a fire, Lord God, that says, I love God. It doesn't matter what I have to go through, what testing or trial. I believe that he's faithful. I believe that he's true. I'm not going to throw away my confidence. I know it has a great reward that, Lord, as I endure and I keep on pressing in, Lord, I'm going to receive what you promised me. And I thank you, Lord God, that your people will know, Lord, that many lives are being touched and changed by their steadfastness, by them being in on move, Lord God, by them keeping on, keeping on, keep on standing, Lord, in the midst of hard and difficult places, keep their minds set upon you, keep established in you, Father God. Lives are being changed and touched. The atmosphere is being changed and the devil is being pushed back and the land, Lord God, that you've claimed, Lord, is being upheld. It's, it's theirs. It's theirs and it's not being taken over by the evil one. Now, Father, I bless your people this day. In Jesus' name, amen. You have a wonderful, wonderful week. And know this, God Almighty, he loves you. He loves you. This God, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. God bless you. Bye-bye.